All right, welcome back. So as you can see, I've got a, a various uh, sort of thermal imagers here. Everything from Top Don to HSF tools to FLIR to one of my favorites, pretty much probably my favorite here is the uh, Thermal Master P3. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, Guide Sense as well. So basically I just wanna go through, give a rundown, just a quick rundown. I wanna really focus though today's video and comparing the FLIR, the um, Thermal Master, and the HSF tools. Um, these three here really aren't even, well, the C, the C Compact Pro is okay, but honestly, it's, it doesn't even compare with, the, with these here. So we're going to try to be fair about it. Um, like I said, I'm going to still put some footage in of these little cheaper ones just so you can see what you're paying for. Stick around to the end, but you will be surprised to find you don't always necessarily get what you pay for. Sometimes, you know, the most expensive isn't always the best. So we're going to find that out here today, and I'm going to show you exactly why I say that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these out of the way here. Um, some of the bigger ones. Just so that way we can focus on, let's get these out of the way as well. Now we can focus on these three here. These are like, to me, the top contenders especially if you're you know you're trying to, you only want to use a phone uh, for standalone stuff we'll go over that in another video but for your phone based models these to me are going to be the top contender the hsf tools um finder s2 the fleer that's going to be the fleer one pro and then the thermal master p3 all right so first off i'm going to show you We'll go ahead and get the Thermal Master running. So the one thing I love that stands out about this Thermal Master uh, P3 is the fact that out of all of them, it works with both Apple and Android. So the first ones to that I've seen, honestly, to not basically make it so we have to use one or the other or buy a whole separate camera, you know, for it to work with Android, which to me is amazing. Um, I don't, I don't understand why that's not just a universal standard. I mean, I do, but. Uh, I just, yeah, you would think that this would be something a lot more prominent here in the industry. Um, so yeah, that's a major plus. Another thing is you got the manual focus ring. Okay, so you can focus this thing super close. You can use this thing. This this thing really does um, shine when it comes to like diagnosing circuit boards. So if you're using, if you're doing like a diagnosis on a board, you want to find bad uh, res resistors or transi transistors or things like that in a board. This is definitely going to show you hot spots on a board. Another thing as well, obviously, USB-C compatibility. That's good. All right, so just a couple uh, quick specs on the Thermal Master P3 here. We're going to have a 256 by 192 detector resolution, which is super good, super quality um, for this price point camera. Okay, it's got the X3 IR, which is basically upscales that to 512 by 384. Um, this does... Uh, temperature range down to from minus four degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 1122 degrees um, Fahrenheit so pretty powerful um, plus or minus two two degrees Celsius accuracy so it's really I mean this is comparable to like a five thousand dollar FLIR camera as far as specs and trust me um, it's not just on paper this thing definitely shows it definitely shows as far as um, you know in the field also another thing about this that's really powerful is going to be your frame rate your refresh rates 25 hertz uh, frame rate from which this FLIR is a lot lower out to take a look at the specs I believe it's like 8 if I'm not mistaken 8 hertz uh, refresh on that and I believe the HSF tools has probably got 25 hertz as well this also has 15 times um, digital zoom the HSF tools finder is very very um, comparable in specs Look how compact that is as well. So we've got 256 by 192 uh, resolution. It also does uh, super resolution as well. That boosts it up to uh, from 960 to 720, which is pretty cool. All right. Less than 40 um, micro Kelvin sensitivity, which is really good. 25 um, hertz frame rate. And it also does minus 4 to 752 degrees Fahrenheit temperature range. So... Yeah, this is a really, really good camera as well. Okay, so with the Thermal Master 
we're just going to go through the different options real quickly. Um, so we've got, we'll start off with the point here. So you can pull, select different points, point one, two, three. And then what that's doing is showing you, here's your point temperature. Right now it's in Celsius. So I can literally switch it from Celsius to uh, Fahrenheit. I've got to go into the back behind the scenes for that, which I'm not really a fan of. But so as you can see, we've got our point selection and that's just showing us different temperature points. We can have this in a stationary setting and that way you can just monitor um, how your temperatures are changing and varying over time. Okay, here's line. So we can just draw literally, hold on, there we go. Draw a line. And that's just gonna show you temperature changes um, that are on a line there, high to low. Okay, which is pretty cool. Box, you get the point. So you can have all those things active at once. It's showing your average temperature within your line, average temperature within your box. You can have mult as many boxes as you want set up. You can see them all rendering out for you. Okay. R3. Oh no, you can only have three boxes. I apologize. Okay, so you can have three lines, three boxes, and three points. Okay. That's pretty sweet. All right, so now... We don't need to go into that. It's like, what's this here? Clear all that, okay. Now we can just go to our palettes, color palettes, that's standard. I always love my iron red. As you can see, you can just choose whatever you want. I'm just gonna stick to iron red, okay. This is gonna be your transparency. So if you have your actual visible light image behind it, you can do that. There it is. Okay, I'll turn that off can rotate there you go so now it's showing me in proper perspective mirror it scale okay contrast brightness don't need any of that you know what that's about so yeah basic you know it's got the basic options you're gonna need um, most important things as well. Here's your record feature. Okay. Photo. I just quickly take snapshots. Um, okay. Go back. And also there's a refresh button down here. So you can just hit refresh. Now this changes from, you got your X3, and you can see, when I hit X3, boom, look how crisp that is around the outer edge, compared to just standard, X3, standard, X3, standard, unreal, okay, alright, so we'd have to, like I say, we can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but I'm not going to do that right now, but yeah, these are the options you have for the um, thermal master p3 all right so i'm up in an attic here and um let's see here basically burn protection active please click confirm all right so yeah this is a really quality camera um i'm gonna go ahead and hit start recording here okay so you can see um i'm gonna go ahead and get our focus tuned in I'm up in an attic here, I'm doing a gas furnace maintenance. And you can see, look at the detail on that inducer. You can see the wheel, the frame rate is so, the frame rate is so um, fast, you can actually see the, the shaft spinning in that inducer smoothly. So, uh, let's see here. There's the flame, look at that. 900 degrees so if you want we can go ahead and inspect the the flue pipe 302 degrees looking good another thing i always like to do i like to inspect the um 
you see your receptacle switches probably not going to be able to see through that plastic but a lot of times if there's um, any issues with the uh, wire connectors you'd be, it'd be uh, you'd see it overheating main thing is the main thing that we want to inspect those are duct work make sure there's no leaks I know it is foil so it's gonna kind of throw it off a bit but you'll see really hot spots in the attic or if this was an AC mo maintenance you'd see cold areas um, I'd have to change this as well because I've got it in the high I'm gonna change my thermal sensitivity as you can see we can go to auto might be good but let me go and switch I'm gonna do auto so radiometric mode so that's gonna be a lot more sensitive now for look at that see this thermal sensitivity now how much better it is and if I had it on the look at that so you can see the thermal gain from the Sun on the roof there a lot of that thermal load but I don't see any potential for well maybe what's that back there maybe I think I do see something back there really hot so about 85 degrees where you see the line most of it's 73 but back here it's showing 85 so let me peek back there let me peek back there real quick and see what we're working with oh wow Let's see if I can walk over there want to have to do this but Yeesh. sometimes it's better to I'm gonna check it out and see what we're working with this it's very peculiar to me the amount of thermal gain we're getting yeah all that heat Might or might not be. I'm just checking. So that's all. That's what we're here for. Oh, crap. No. There's no leakage. It's just kind of. You can see there's more than likely where. Maybe the boot's not sealed around properly. I can see airflow though. Look. See that insulation moving? There's definitely some sort of airflow. Oh yeah, I can feel it too. Well, either way. It's uh it's more of a boot issue at that point. It's probably not going to be anything big enough to have to address. But you can see it does work. So yeah, as you can see with the FLIR, um, it's not capturing the spinning of the shaft like the Thermal Master. Okay. It looks really good with high temperature because um, the thermal sensitivity is not as good on here but there has to be a pretty pretty large temperature gradient in order for it to look this good otherwise it's kind of garbage see the roof there looks good I mean looks pretty respectable as you can see it did capture that hot spot in the back corner there so it is fine. It, it found a duct leak. That's exactly what a duct leak would look like. It's just that's at the boot itself. It's leaking um, around the actual perimeter of the boot. So that counts. Uh, the temperature here of the flue pipe. Now you can tell the FLIR was built a little bit more with, I guess, field 
uh, conscious as far as the rubber uh, outer the outer molding here it's rubber so I guess it could take a couple falls these are just gonna be more plastic uh, it's high quality durable plastic from what it seems but it's not gonna have much impact resistance as much as the FLIR will um, but yeah like I said just be careful with your tools and you shouldn't have to worry about that okay so I pretty much have them down to these three cameras, okay? If I had to choose, top camera, honestly, is, you know, honest decision, honest opinion is going to be the uh, Thermal Master P3, okay? And that's just because overall resolution, like I said, this, this camera looks to me comparable to a $6,000 FLIR camera, okay? No exaggeration. Um, super powerful, super high resolution, and it's just easy to use compact keep it in person second would definitely be the hsf tools just because once again it's better resolution than the FLIR doesn't have the msx visible light image but i'm not a fan of that so it's not hurting my feelings but this is a really quality camera and lastly like i said this FLIR FLIR compact pro in my opinion it's just overpriced you're paying for a lot of the marketing I believe it's just you're not getting what you pay for with this camera. Honestly, you're just it's it's not even anywhere in the league of these two cameras. It's kind of comparable to this one, but still not as good. I'm not going to lie about it. But as far as comparing it to these two to the um Thermal Master it doesn't compare at all. And hopefully the image hopefully the visual the footage speaks for itself and you don't have to take my word for it, but yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you have um, tried any of these cameras or if you have any opinions on them. And we'll definitely uh, be doing some more testing and experimenting here with this uh, winter furnace maintenances coming up. I like to do, I like to use these a lot for my maintenances so, and diagnostics. So we'll, we'll definitely have more footage for these in the coming videos. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.